Hi everyone, welcome to a new video. Okay, so what have we got in the box today? Well, we know what we've got in the box. We've got a digital cluster. So this will be a quick uh, unboxing. Okay, so it comes very well, very well protected. You've got this uh, foam packaging in here. And that really does protect the, uh, the cluster in transit. Okay, so here's the screen itself. It's basically a flat panel LCD screen. And then you've got the, uh, the cowling in front of it, which is relatively straightforward to fasten together. For some reason, this one seems to have two protective films on it. I'm not quite sure why. Okay, and um, this one should have come with uh, this cable for the USB uh, updates and the little T10 Torx tool, but this being a pre-production model, it didn't have one. Okay, installation then. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, I've got the key in, I'm going to quickly start her up. <laughs> going to take a picture of the readings okay so this is um but we're going to need these readings later on so that's basically your speedo reading and then on your iDrive if you've got it uh, go down to your vehicle status all the way down to the bottom and then take note of your readings um any that don't appear on the screen properly on the bottom right hand corner there and just go into them individually. Take note of all your readings and we'll need those later on. Okay. Turn her off, get the key out, and then we're gonna release get the key out all together just in case. Release the steering column, pull it all the way down, pull it all the way forward, and lock it in position. This is so I can get maximum um, access to the screws. Now, the screws we want are these two up here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we've got a screw there and a screw there. Okay, these are T10s and you do get a little driver in the kit. Unfortunately, I don't have that with this one, so... I've got my own little driver. If I can get it in the hole there properly, here we go. I'm gonna take these two screws out. Carefully, because you want these. Okay, it's in a black screw in a black Cowling in a dark area is not the best thing, but it can be done. Okay, that's that bit done. We're going to drop down, pull it forward. And this is why you move the steering wheel. There we go. And then you're going to lean back, put your hand right back in there, and find the clip. Press the clip in and pull it down and then release your cable and that is your old set of clocks out, put them to one side. Right so now we're going to need a cutting tool here, I used a multi tool, we're going to take out that block there and that block just there. They're relatively simple to get out as long as you can get, actually, get the tool actually in there. Okay, so when you've removed them, this is what they'll look like. It's just basically, like, like I say, a, a bit of a block. And that's it. You'll have two pieces there. And uh, we'll just quickly show you what the uh, you'll end up with inside the housing. 
There you go. One of them two little um, thin pieces miss, um, to be removed as well. They, they need to go just like they are on that side. I took them off after this uh, after this bit. Okay, so now we're into actually fitting the screen in. Place it in, in position and plug in your USB um, cable into the back of the screen. Then feed the USB uh, socket down that hole there, which leads you through to the side. Okay, so this is where it'll come out. Just pull down your, your rubber, pop off your plastic end shield, and then it, it'll come out just up there somewhere, and then you can just have it dangling down there, and that's uh, easy access if you need to upgrade. Okay, plug in your multi-pin connector, clip it into place, and we're now ready to actually put the screen into its uh, seated position. Just gently feed it in, may have to go in at a slight angle just to get it in there, hold it at that point, uh, obviously we don't need the cowl on at this point because it just gets in the way, so that's the next bit. So get your cowling. Put it in place and then you want to be plugging in your reset button cable uh, this is accessed from a little hole underneath on the inside of the cowling okay so you want to feed the bottom lugs of the cowling into the bottom lugs on the lcd screen and then pivot it up so that your top um, metal bars feed into their little slots on the cowling and then push it up into its seated position inside the cover. Get your two T10 screws and screw them back in. And uh, just reposition your steering wheel and we're done. Now for some settings. Okay, so set up. So what we need now is we need this button here, the, your, uh, your BC stalk. If you press it, you'll see the top row of uh, indications. There we go. So we've got real-time info. And you can, you can either press this one to keep going through. Or once it's activated, once you've actually initially pressed that button once, you can then use the scroll key to go in either direction. Okay, so let's just go through them. So we've got trip. And this is the point to do anything you need to press and hold. Press and hold. And there you go, you got it. So you can go up and down. Press and hold. It goes into it. So that's my trip currently. So I'm currently on 810.7 miles since I set this screen up. Uh, to reset it, as it says at the top of the screen, it says uh, hold OK stroke DISP to reset. So that'll be that one. I'm not quite sure what it says OK or DISP because it's the BC button. And if I press and hold that, I'll tell you what, we'll go down to trip B because I don't want to reset trip A currently. So we press and hold and it resets it. OK. Scroll down to, I mean, like I say, you can do that on it or you can go see what I mean okay so it moves it down so press and hold and returns press one mile from startup let's have a look what's on that one press and hold okay so you've got distance time from start fuel and speed okay just press once it goes off press and hold again press and hold anything no, so that's a set. So that's a set view. Then that's what you're going to get on it on that one. Down there from reset. So that's so that was my last. So that was my average was forty one point six miles per hour. Uh, average fuel was thirty one point four miles per gallon. Distance of eight hundred and ten point nine miles. And elapsed time of nineteen minutes twenty eight seconds. I'm not quite sure what that is because that was over two days. So. So again, as it says at the bottom of there, hold BC to reset. So if I want to reset all that a lot, I could re press that. Now I'm not going to, though, because I don't want to. 
Okay, so run reef yard. So for this is for the last time it was fueled. Press and hold. So total distance 174.6 miles. So it was average was 29.4 miles per gallon and average speed 43.5 miles per hour. Again, press and hold. Intelligent idling. Not sure what this one is, actually. Let's have a look. So, elapsed time. No, 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 nothing's set in there, but I believe that's because I've not actually got that on set. I believe that is on the settings is set as off. All right, eco. Let's have a look at eco. Uh, looks like I'm very eco friendly, according to that one. And then you go your turn, press and hold, and that's that. So, that's your trip. To go across real time info, press and hold. Now, this is the screen that I have up normally, so it's constant miles per gallon. So, that's the one that changes all the time. So, uh, as you're speeding up, it, it will obviously go down, as you're cruising more, it will be high, it'll be a, a higher reading. Coolant temperature obviously, I've not used the car yet this morning, so it's only six degrees. Oil temp is not minus 40, it's just not registered it yet because I've not actually turned the car on. So distance 175 miles since I last fueled up and the battery voltage is currently 12.1. That's because the car is switched off. Press and it goes back to that screen and then press one more time for info. Press and hold again. And now you got, so you got your trip A, press and hold. Trip B, so that's, so you see just below the rev counter there, it changed, you got your odometer setting at 107,106 miles and then below that you got trip B and trip A if you press and hold again. So I'm leaving it on trip A currently. Press one more time, adaptive um, cruise control. Whereas we don't have adaptive cruise control, that's not a lot of use to us. Steering angle, I've not worked out what this one actually is yet. I mean, it, it does that, but once you uh, actually turn the steering wheel, it doesn't do anything, unless of course it does while you're driving. I haven't actually tried that one yet, so I might do that in a little while. Press it again. Service info, press and hold. So there's all you, now this is where you can reset. So let's have a look at this one. These are all basically working on the same principle. So we go with oil and filter. If I press and hold oil and filter, the reset button um, highlights. So that's distance to the next service. So when you, if you do your own oil changes or any of your own servicing, you can go onto this one and then you can reset that press and hold and that will reset it but you can actually set in the miles itself so there we go so 6210 miles again you, you can you can change that one let's just have a quick look press and hold and then you go into your whatever it is you can just scroll through the screen all the way through to whatever you want on it and we'll put it back to 6,000. That's slightly different than to what I actually had it. Press, hold, and it goes to set. Which is weird because it's now jumped to 3,726 miles. Which is not what I had. Hmm, interesting. Press one more time and you've got your date on there. So you press and hold and you can change the date. Just keep pressing. And it goes so far. So only goes so far through anyway. So 2023, which is what it's going to be. It's uh, 25th of the 4th. That's today's date, and that's not when my service is actually due. So my service is actually... So press and hold, and it changes to V1. My service is actually due on the 3rd of June. There we go. Press and hold. I'm actually going to avoid... And I'm going to have to, aren't I? Because it's not going to let me. Oh, there we go. So you just, oh, it just goes through the various settings. Six thousand two hundred designs. So that's what we had on the. So that's your inspection. That's your brake fluid. Again, these all work the same way. So when you've actually done something, fuel filter. I don't know whether that's ever been changed on this car. Whether you even can change it on this car. I'm not sure. I have to check on that. Spark plugs. Um, Again, not sure when they I do know when they were last changed. I just haven't set this one in. This can be set, so everything, all these can be set manually. So I do actually know when my spark plugs were, were actually uh, replaced. I would have to go and check the paperwork to get that actually out there. So that could be changed. So I could do that one. 
So you got all these for all the way through there. So uh, individual two, not sure what that one actually does. Seems to have a, a reset service on there. And then we go back to return and we set sets back to the previous menu. Forward one vehicle setup, press and hold. So this is so you got your home lights. So this is the amount of seconds that lights will stay on um, when you've locked the car, so you can uh, see see me home uh, setting. I've actually got it set to zero, although we do actually still stay on for a moment for a few seconds anyway. Uh, this is like when you're doing that. Now mine are actually set to five because I've had them already pre preset to five in the first place. So I'm not altering that, but you can have that changed uh, to the various, um, either, either the one or the three. The one and three seem to be the standard for BMW, whereas mine are actually set to five. Um, that's a bit of coding I did uh, a while ago. Daylight. Quite sure what daylight actually does because my daytime running lights are on all the time anyway. Unlock all doors. So when I unlock all doors, chain uh, open. You can have that change to. Well, that's not even in English, so I'm not sure what that is actually supposed to say. I will check that up. Oh, back up to one. All doors. Yeah, that's not in English. I'm not quite sure what that is actually supposed, supposed to say. So by the time you get this video, I will put something on the screen to say what that actually says. Uh, okay, so automatic seat. Uh, that should be that it sets the seats when you unlock the driver's door or unlock all doors. Uh, also now, automatic relock. Don't like automatic relock. Um, so I've left that off. You can obviously have that switched on if you just press. And if you see what I'm doing with my thumb, you just press and hold, and it changes. Single press, and it goes from that changes to the next one. Train interlocking. Not really sure what that actually is. I will have to check with a manufacturer on that one. Uh, lock flashing. So actually, indicators flashing when you um, lock the car. Unlock flashing, exactly the same thing. Flashes the indicators when you unlock the car. Tire pressure reset. Uh, right, I'm on uh, FTM, which is flat tire monitoring. Um, so this really is more set up. Well, is this is set up for TPMS, tire pressure monitoring system, which I don't have on this car. So let's see what the options are here. No. No options whatsoever. Oh, I think that's set up actually in one of the main menus, so that's probably why it's not working on there. Light adjustment, um, I believe this. Not actually sure what this one actually does. So we'll come back to that one. We'll check what that one actually does. Hopefully I'll put a little uh, disclaimer on the bottom of the screen as to what it actually does, and I'll chat later on. Okay, so we're back to return, press and hold, and we're back off vehicle setup. So and then that's the end, that's the end of that information one. Okay, so we're now into the system settings menu. Again, press and hold. So the first one we've got is, I think that is the first one, isn't it? Yep, that's correct. That is the first one. So we theme. So this is where you can now change your um, display screen. So we've got sport, which is what's set up currently. Press and hold. That's your comfort setting. I haven't actually really driven with that one on actually yet because I've, I've been driving with the sport one, which I actually quite like. Press and hold. So actually progressive. Sport Plus. There's that one, which I did actually drive with for a while, but didn't really particularly like. So what you've got on this one is you've got your uh, revs up both sides and then the speedo digitally displayed only in the middle. Uh, you've still got your oil, oil temperature on the right and you've still got your fuel gauge on the left and then everything else on the bottom as it was before. Um, and then you can also set up the left and the right panels as to whatever you want in, in those panels. 
I'll tell you what, I'm actually going to try a little bit of comfort and see how we go with that one today on the way to work. Okay, so that's themes. Then we've got the date and time. Press and hold that, and you can change each individual number. Press and hold. And you can change the numbers around to whatever year you want. And press and hold to change your next number, etc. etc. And once you've finished, press and hold. And it goes on to the next one. So that's uh, the month. So it is the 25th of the 4th. Now I wondered if you can change that around. No, you can't. I was just wondering if you can change it around to uh, day, day, month, month. But it's not. It's set up as month, month, day, day. Not an issue, really. As the date doesn't tend to appear on the uh, screen anyway. And then the time, which is currently uh, 8.12 in the morning. The next one, press and hold. And that saves it. You didn't see any difference there because, of course, it's already set up to that in the first place. Oh, let me get this camera a little bit higher up. Here we go. Right, so press return, press and hold, and it goes back to that one. So next one is language, press and hold. That's the various languages that are available on this screen. So what are we going to have a quick look? The ones I know of, obviously. Uh, English, uh, I would say simplified Chinese, I'd guess. Um, I'll take a total guess. Is that Russian? Maybe. Sorry, don't know that one. Spanish, German, Turkish. Uh, I'll go with Korean, I'd guess. Pure guess. French, Italian, and that's it. So, press and hold to return. Okay, general setup. Press and hold. So this is the daytime bright. So this is obviously I'm in daytime currently because uh, my lights aren't on. So that's a hundred percent. I mean, you can change it to whatever you want to. Let's have a quick look. So that's uh, <laughs> believe it or not, that is what are we on. That is ten percent, twenty percent. Oops, twenty thirty. 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. I prefer that on 100 during the daytime. It shows up nicely and doesn't seem to be affected by the sunlight. At uh, night time, I did have a, it was originally set from factory at 10%. Now, I found that to be a little bit dark. I've put it up to 40. I haven't really driven too dark um outside so i thought it seems okay in the darkness i have driven so far so again it is a personal preference so we can change it accordingly next one color uh i'm not 100 percent sure this actually refers to you've got red black white blue gem blue and space gray uh, I'm assuming that is for when you've got the car image up on the screen and that you can choose the different colours of the car. Um, I haven't actually got the car screen. I haven't actually got that car image up on the screen yet. And it's not even a Z4 anyway, so I'm not really interested in having it on the screen. But that would be the one. Okay, so driving mode. Uh, you different colours on the uh, display here. Uh, what have we got? So that's just change it. No, actually change the purple then straight back to orange. So here you go. So you've got purple there. Uh, sport plus mode. You can have these on all the time, you see. So this is sort of a reason behind this one. Um, done. It, whatever you want to change it to. Um, not really seeing it as a massive feature myself, but yeah, it can be. Uh, speed warning on off. Now, this is in association with that next one. So I've got this switched. I accidentally switched this on at 30 miles an hour. I don't mean I was driving at 30 miles an hour. I mean, I had it set up for 30 miles an hour. So every time you went over 30 miles an hour, a bong went off on the dash. Now, uh, yeah, you probably really don't want that. Uh, so, But you can set it up for whatever you want. So all you do is press and hold and it's switched on. Then you go to your next one and you set up the mileage that it's at. Now I've set it at 101.844 miles per hour because I don't particularly want it going off. 
uh, but that can be altered. You, know, you just press and hold, and it just changes the mileage. What we got, it keeps it's going up. I don't know. I can't remember now how high up it goes, but it does. I think the, it can go around. It's around about thirty mile an hour. I think is the lowest one. So either way, I have that switched off because I don't particularly want it on. But it could be a useful feature, I suppose. Oops. There we go. Right, so press and hold. Right, now we're into the factory modes. Now there are two, that I'm currently aware of, there are two factory modes. If there are any more, I'll add them in at a later date. Um, but anyway, so we press and hold, and we come up with a code. Right, so I say, the, these are the two codes I know. The first one is zero, press and hold, one, so press ones, then press and hold, six, press, 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 and then press and hold, and eight. Get to the eight, press and hold, highlights the OK button, and then press. And it takes you into this one. Now this is your, well, this is your tank setting. Okay, so we're gonna pause a moment. When I first set my screen up, one step above the main tank setting here was a chance to change the odometer reading, your mileage reading. Now, since I've set it up, it's no longer available. So I'm assuming this is now set up, it's set up to the cast module and it's reading the correct mileage because it doesn't always necessarily read exactly the correct mileage, it might be slightly out. This is why you had to take the reading at the beginning before you disconnected the old cluster. So, to change it, you just go up one more stage and it goes through exactly the same procedure, press and hold, press and hold, press and hold, etc., and then OK at the end. And that will then change the mileage to the correct reading. So it's just exactly the same as all the other settings, and then you can move back onto the uh, main tank. Unfortunately, I don't have a picture of it because I now can't access it anymore, and I don't, obviously I don't have video because I did this lot of setting uh, to show you how to do it once I'd already done my own settings. So that's how we do it. We'll now carry on with the rest of the video. Now, this is to set up your fuel tank size. Now, I am reliably informed, and I will correct this on the screen if I'm wrong, because I'm going to check up again today. Now, all you do is you simply press, and it's the same system as everything else. To change it, you press the numbers until you get to the desired location, and then press and hold, and it moves up on and when you get to the last one once it's set up press and hold and it jumps to the next one i will say we've got zero on the sub tank and then you do, do is press and hold and it tells you it's set up okay so this uh next one then is a vehicle type sorry let me just adjust that slide right next one then is vehicle type and this is where you change the vehicle view this is the image of the particular vehicle uh when it's on the screen um oops uh, so you can press and hold every time so it's x5 x6 and an f10 and that's it that's all you got i've not had it set because i don't particularly want to see a vehicle that's not mine Next one down, uh, Model E, and the other option is Model F. And if you notice, the fuel gauge and the oil temp, they change positions. There you go, so one's with them in, one's with them out. A hybrid, well, we're not a hybrid, so that's off. Uh, oil scale, now, with the oil scale, that puts the oil scale at the bottom. Uh, I didn't initially have that on. Uh, it works in the same way as the... Uh, one on iDrive works, which is basically the car has to be running and stationary for it to change. The rest of the time, it doesn't alter. So it's I've decided that I ended up having it switched off in the end because it was a superfluous gauge uh, for when you're driving. And that's advanced settings on that one. So we're going to go back into that. And once you go back into it, it comes up with the same code. So what you want to do now to change it to the next number is just press and hold. And then you've got to go back through the sequence again. So the next number is 0, 1, 6, 
Right, so this gives you a bit more information. Let's just make sure that is the top one. Ah, oh, no, there is. Right, front tire exchange. Not really sure what that is supposed to be. Um, you got yes and not. That's it. Yes and not. So I'm not really sure what front tire exchange. I must ask, and if I come up with that answer, I shall put that on the screen now. Right. So next one. Door info. So this would display your doors open information on the car display on the on the image display okay next one then is cruise control uh, disabled or enabled that's uh, that's it basically i've got cruise control so i've got it, got it enabled um the next one is tire pressure now this is where i was on about the uh, ftm and tpms um as i have ftm so i've got um, tire pressure disabled doesn't need to be on the screen it's simply again disable or enable angle sensor uh, that didn't really seem to do anything when it was on the screen so i didn't bother with it i might actually just put that back on i'm going to test something later on while i'm driving to see if it actually does come up then uh, torque split i'm assuming that may be to do with the um hybrid um, but obviously these aren't hybrids that's of no point uh, set up enable start sorry uh, start up enabled um, I believe a start up is it does the display at the start of the screen uh, other than that no, I can't see that was it will do uh, reset enabled that's so you can reset various parts of the screen of the um, screen Re refuel the same again that just shows that when it's refueling points and your various settings um we showed it earlier on where it was the um your distances and stuff from from refueling uh intelligent again that was also uh, uh, arfies probably don't really apply to most of what people will drive anyway uh metric unit right now so this is your uh, your miles or um kilometers so I've currently got mine set in Imperial because I like stuff in miles. And we change it to metric. There you go. You can see the differences on the screen. Change it back. So your, your speedo uh, is obviously in kilometers per hour uh, or miles per hour. And then your, um, your odd odometer, etc. Also changes. So that's okay. Clock enabled, so that puts the clock um, at the bottom of the screen next to the amount of miles you've got left on the fuel gauge. Uh, 24 hour format, that's uh, self explanatory. Uh, outdoor temperature, yeah, again, that's on the, bo that's the bottom right of the screen next to the oil temperature. Uh, temperature units in centigrade or Fahrenheit. Uh, doors info enable so again that, that's uh, whether you uh, have the door open information fuel tank position now where you've got your fuel gauge and you've got your um um down we're all down, just there you've got a little arrow pointed to the right currently change it to the left it points to the left that few that purely just indicates which side your tank's on if you didn't know a reversing side up oh, sound i'm not sure whether this is a reversing sound that comes out of in fact i'll tell you what i'm going to enable that and see what happens in a few moments uh, vehicle setup enabled and return so that's that setting for that one uh version press and hold that just shows you what this version of the software etc is well, I'm currently on version 2 on this particular software. Upgrade. Now, this... Uh, right, so we've got two set two codes for this one. Upgrade. We've got two codes on here. Four. Three. Two. One. Right, now this is in case your cruise control doesn't display. Now the cruise control should display just about there. 
when it's active. I'll put a picture up now. That's what it looks like. Uh, uh, but if it doesn't show up, then you can set it up accordingly. Now, if you scroll all the way down here, there's all the various models and the protocols for um, cruise control. We've got the E90s, you want to pass all these, X5s, X6, and Z4. Now, you keep going past them, there's no more Z4s, but there's only one Z4, and that's that one there. So, if your screw, cruise control does not... If your cruise control does not display, and that is when you're driving above 20 miles an hour, it will not display prior to that. So obviously don't think, oh, it's not displaying, and do it anyway. So um, if you're driving along 20 miles an hour and you press cruise and it doesn't display, and you want to go into this setting, set that one. And then I believe, a, a, well, actually, I'll put it on the screen. Let's have a look. So set that one. No. Press and hold, and that comes up on the screen. Select car type Z4280, and that will then go off eventually. I don't believe there's a return on this one, or is there? I can't remember now. Oh, yes, there is a return. So scroll all the way back down again and press and hold to return. Okay, and the other um, code for this one is if you've got an automatic, it will automatically come with the P um, in the middle of the screen. I'll show you a quick picture or a couple of pictures now. So that's what it looks like. Now, of course, if you've got, a, if you've got a, uh, an automatic, that's fine. That's whatever position the um, auto lever is in. If you've got a manual, then obviously you don't need this. So you'll go back into this upgrade one again. No, whether the numbers are there or not, it doesn't matter. And it is uh, zero, one, eight, one. Now what that does is that takes the uh, automatic gearbox setting off and puts it into manual, which is what I've got on mine now. now. In fact, you'll notice there, what I've just done there, because I've done that again, it's actually put the P next to the temperature on the lower right-hand side. So we'll go back and, and do that again. I'll just show you, you watch that P down the bottom there. So we've still got 0181 in there. Oh, no. Hang on. So zero, one, eight, one, and press, and the P goes off. So if you've got a manual, that will get rid of the letter P. Okay, um, that is the last of the settings. Oh, I like my real-time info in there. So there we go. So that's off that. So it's, um, let me just... So we go back into settings again a minute. So we go back to theme. So we go to, which one is it? Sport. So there. So where we've got, obviously, a lot on the picture. So now we've not got the P below the uh, zero miles per hour. And I could put, I guess I put this picture back up again. So that's what happens when you've got the auto boxing with the P. And then without, it looks something like that. So I'm going to go, oops back on comfort because I want to give this one a try today while I'm driving I'll get back out of all that and there we go so there you go you're all set up so uh, enjoy <laughs> 